I went to a car boot sale last weekend and I bought this radio for a pound. It doesn't work, but I'm actually not worried about that because my main reason for buying it was to stop anybody else buying it and using it in this country. As a bonus, the flat rechargeable batteries that were in it charge up and work fine so they are worth far more than I paid for this handheld in the first place. To the untrained eye it probably looks like a bog standard PMR446 walkie talkie. To the slightly more trained eye which I guess most people watching this will be the reference to 14 channels UHF radio ought to be the first clue and on the back, the person who owned it previously had written the frequencies it operates on, channel 1462.5625. Some people will recognise as being channel 1 of the family radio service, which is legal in America and Canada, but not legal here in the United Kingdom. And that's the purpose of making this video. If you buy radio gear at a car boot sale, charity shop or even on eBay, make absolutely sure that what you're buying is PMR446 and not, for example, the family radio service. Some sellers may genuinely not know the difference. Some, I'm pretty sure, do know the difference. For example, there was a lady on eBay earlier in 2021 selling a pair of walkie-talkies for quite an inflated price, actually. And she mentioned very specifically that they operated on American frequencies rather than UK ones. And she promoted that as a kind of benefit and also no doubt as a way of justifying the rather high asking price by operating on American frequencies she said there's more privacy and less interference from other people who are all on PMR 446 here in the UK. Now I'm not going to turn this into a what the law says type video lecture um, my view, not just of radio, but with life in general, is that whether something is legal or not is a secondary consideration to whether it will harm other people or cause other people problems or not. And I live in a semi-rural area here, and I do understand, I really understand why somebody living in a very rural part of the UK or even a semi-rural part, might very well turn around and say, well, I've never heard anybody on the FRS frequencies. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Realistically, if I transmit on these frequencies, I'm not going to cause any interference to anybody. So it's no big deal. So what? And indeed, from my semi-rural location, I've heard maybe three or four transmissions on the FRS frequencies uh, throughout the whole of the time I've been working from home and I started doing that in March 2020 and none of those transmissions have been very strong here or indeed very long lasting. However, last week on Freedom Day, as some people wanted to call it, uh, the 19th of July 2021, this happened. Now that signal is a constant strength. It's not fluttering rapidly or slowly for that matter. So I'm as sure as I can be without being able to decode that, and I assume that's DMR or some such, but whatever it is, I can't listen to it in analog FM. I'm as sure as I can be that it's not a mobile station or indeed a simplex station. I think that is an output of a repeater. Now, 
let's just imagine that the output of that repeater is very close to me, close enough that if I were to transmit on channel 8 on this thing, if it worked, then I could cause problems. That frequency is going to be licensed as the output of a repeater. If it were the input frequency, then possibly, if I transmitted in analog FM, the repeater might automatically switch to analog FM on the output. But because it's the repeater's output frequency, that won't happen. So let's also imagine that I'm using an FRS radio a lot better and expensive, more expensive. I mean, look at that, the, the rubber around the helical antenna has fallen off over, over the years. Let's imagine I was using something better than this that had um, CTCSS tones or privacy tones, as some people refer to them, which is a complete misnomer, but we, we, we won't go there. If I have got a privacy tone slash PL tone slash CTCSS tone, whatever you want to call it, on receive, then I will not hear the output of the repeater, DMR. I might realise something is up if my handheld won't let me transmit, if I've got busy channel lockout switched on, but I will never hear the DMR repeater. Equally, people listening to the DMR repeater who are close enough to me to be in range won't realise that I'm transmitting in FM because they won't hear it again unless they've got a, a multi-standard radio that will flip to FM automatically but depending on how the system's set up I don't know if that would be likely or not so at best they might wonder sometimes why they can't hear the repeater all of a sudden for a few seconds or tens of seconds at a time or they might think there's a problem with their radios and their system and be inconvenienced and incur the cost of having a radio engineer to come out and fix it to then turn around to say no it's fine everything's uh, good or at worst you could unknowingly interfere with a very vital transmission and I know people watching this will think to themselves well that's not very likely is it I'm um, in my mid 40s now and I've been around long enough to see some incredibly improbable things actually come to, to pass and if you'd said to me before last Monday does anybody ever use any of the FRS channels or frequencies I should say in your local area I would truthfully have turned around and said no they don't so the fact that until today you've never heard a, a signal on a particular frequency so you think it's clear and available to use doesn't prove or guarantee that somebody isn't going to start using it tomorrow so I hope the video doesn't sound like it's too uh, too uh, lecturesome if that's a word um, the whole point is just to say if you do buy equipment then make absolutely sure that you are buying what you think you're buying 7-3